Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, the founder of Outcast Games, and in this video, we'll be creating a C++ plugin that will house all of the C++ functions that our distance matching locomotion system will require. And so we will also be implementing our first function inside of this video, the function that predicts the stopping location of the character. Again, don't worry if you know no C++. Um, the code will be provided in the description. You can just paste it in exactly where I say to in the video. And another note, the code isn't my own. It's something I found on the Unreal Engine forums. The post with the code will be linked in the description as well. Though, be sure to copy the code from where I have it linked in the description because the name of the function is different, I believe. And there's no header file in the original forums post. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are inside of the project. We're going to go ahead and set up the plugin and the and our first function inside of our plugin. So we're gonna go to edit, plugins, we're gonna click new plugin, select blueprint library, and we're going to name this distance matching plugin. That's telling me that a plugin with this name already exists and that's because this is the second take of this video and I've already created this plugin but I made a couple mistakes and I decided it'd be better to just redo it. Um, you would type that in and go on to create the plugin. It will generate code and open up the plugin in Visual Studio right here. And of course it'll be blank when you open it up. So you just want to make your way um, down to the distance matching project, plugins, distance matching plugin, source, distance matching plugin, open up private, open up public, and you want to open up your distance matching plugin bplibrary.h and your distance matching plugin bplibrary.cpp. And now these are just default generated project files right here with our library.h and our library.cpp and I have files provided in the description that you can copy and paste code over to. Uh, this code isn't my own. It was, I found it on the Unreal Engine forums and the link to the post where I found it um, will be linked in the description. So it's not my code. Um, I'm not that good with C++ yet. You want to make your way to the header file. Just select everything and paste in the provided header file. And now you want to make your way to this C++ file and do the same thing. Highlight everything and paste in the provided C++ file. Now we can save both of these. We can close out of this and click compile. And you'll wait anywhere from, you know, half a minute to a minute, two minutes, depending on your computer. But when it says compile complete without any errors, go ahead and restart the engine. So I'll do that and I'll be right back once the project is open again. Okay, I am back. The project has been restarted. Now we have to actually make use of our predict stop location function. So let's edit our third person character, our distance matching character that we created. Um, it's just the way it was in the last episode. And let's just close out of all our extra stuff and just leave the event graph here. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to drag off from event tick with a sequence. We won't be running all of this code on tick. We're going to have a couple conditions that will say, are we going to run all this code or not? Because we have to set up some logic. We can't just call our stop prediction function willy nilly. Um, let's say the character is walking around or let's say the character hasn't moved and you're trying to calculate the stop location, that's not going to work. 
um, you want to calculate the stop location as soon as the fingers leave the WASD keys or your thumb leaves your joystick to move. And that's when you want to calculate it the instant that there is no more input. And so that's how we're going to do this. And but then also there's no input. What if there's well, what if you just started the game? You haven't moved yet. There's no input. You shouldn't calculate stopping location because you haven't moved yet. So we have to get that worked in too. And I have all the code figured out in advance. So I'm just going to walk you through it all. For now, I'm going to move the event tick over here to give us some room. And I'm going to get move forward. Get move right. And now for each of these, I'm going to get a not equal node and I'm going to leave it at zero. So this is basically saying if this has a value that's not equal to zero or has input, or if this has input, then do whatever I drag off from this. But we need to combine these and say either or. So that's where the or comes in. So now we connect this and it's if. And this is essentially saying, if there is movement input, do something. Return this boolean as true. So we're going to drag this into a branch. And we're going to connect this up with the first part of this sequence. So, if the character is moving, then we want to set a new boolean, which we need to create named stop to false because if the character is moving they're no longer stopped they're moving and now because the character is moving we want to get a do once node and now we want another variable named has moved and we're going to set has moved to true we need to do once because this is happening every tick. We don't want to set has moved to true every tick. When the character is moving, we only need to set it once. When the player first gives movement input when they've started the game. And now, if this is false, so if the character is not moving, if there is no movement input, we need to check and see if the character has moved because there could be no input in the character might have not have moved yet. So if the character has moved, then we want to set stopped to true because the character has moved, they've been moving, now they've stopped. There's no input, so they're going to stop. But if has moved is false and the player hasn't provided movement input, we want to set stopped to false because how can the player stop if they haven't started yet? Or how can the character stop if it hasn't started yet? So now that we have all of this, we're going to drag off from the second part of this sequence into another branch. And this branch is checking if stopped is true. From true, we're gonna get another do once. And we're going to connect both of these together. And what this is doing is so, okay, you're figuring out if the character is stopped or not. Now you're saying, if the character is stopped, you're going to do this once. And we're going to call an event that is going to activate our function. And now, um, if it's false, meaning if the character is moving, we're going to reset this because we want to call it when the character stops. And actually, I don't even think we need to make this an event. We can just predict stop location. And this is our function that we created for our plugin with C in C++. Now there's some inputs that we need. We need to get actor location. We need to get velocity. Now we need to get our character movement component. And we need to 
get current acceleration. And now we need to get our ground friction. Now we need to get our braking deceleration walking. And now we need to get delta, get world delta seconds. And now for max simulation iterations, let's try 10 and see how accurate this is. But first we need um, to show us where it's predicting. If it just gives us, if we just print this number, this location to the screen, it's gonna be pretty hard to tell, pretty tedious. So instead we're going to draw debug sphere. We need to make sure we set the duration to something higher than zero or we won't see it. Let's make this green. Let's set the line thickness to one. Let's set the radius to something like 25 or 30 actually. We can compile, save. Actually, I almost forgot. Open up your character movement component and search friction and pull up this breaking friction factor. It's set to two. By default, it should be set to one. Two is not physically accurate. It's set to that because of legacy reasons, according to Epic Games, and that will cause us not to get the right results. So let's play. And it looks like something isn't working, which is totally fine. Um, that happens. Let's try to figure out what's going on here. Let's just see if anything, let's just see if stop is getting set. Make it say hello if we've stopped. Okay, yes. We've stopped. That's working. So now it moves on to this branch. It's going to say, true, yes, I'm going to predict the stop location. Let's see. Let's make it say hello if it has predicted the stop location. It has. And so I think the problem is with the iterations. Let's set it to something like 100. So now, as you can see, we have the stop prediction working. It's giving us a sphere, and the sphere is accurate every single time. And there we go. We have it. We now are predicting the stop location ahead of time as soon as I take my finger off of a key. Okay, everyone. So there you have it. We have our plugin created. And we have our first function implemented. In the next video, we'll be implementing another C++ function. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, also, if you liked the video, be sure to like it. And if you want to, well, just if you're enjoying the content on the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell too. Thank you for watching.